Now here I'm going to demonstrate for you an induction coil and I'm going to show you the kind of setup that Hertz had to produce his radio waves. Uh, now I've talked about an induction coil before but this is uh, again showing you how it works. So we've got here two coils so remember that an induction coil essentially combines a transformer and a switch and you can see the transformer part here so this is going to be the primary coil on the inside because connected to this we just have a 6 volt battery so you can see the circuit here we're going from the um, the battery to the coil coil to a switch and a switch back to the battery and it's a push button switch so that the current only runs while I'm holding the switch down and then we have a secondary so this is the secondary coil on the outside so the primary only has a small number of turns the secondary coil has lots and lots and lots of turns so that it will turn this six volts into thousands of volts at the secondary and so the output is what you're going to see across this gap and you will find that uh, when we turn it on that sparks will jump across the gap so just to show you what I mean this is what we've got you can just see it I think you can certainly hear it that sparks are jumping across um, now firstly I'll just give you the safety warning about this so what we have is electrons jumping between the two points that are the electrodes at the top and when that happens there's a quite a high potential difference and so electrons are accelerated across now when they reach the other end they stop very suddenly now any time a charged particle accelerates it emits electromagnetic radiation this is just a fundamental property of matter and so the electrons being accelerated are emitting radio waves that can then get detected but the thing is once they hit the other side and they're stopping very suddenly that's actually a high magnitude acceleration like they're very sudden slowing down and the higher the acceleration of a charged particle then the higher the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation it gives out so as these electrons come to a halt they actually give out x-rays uh, it's not a large amount it's a lot less than you'd get if you had an x-ray at a hospital so it's not that you need to really worry but it's something that you should be aware of and for that reason we have the push button switch so that you don't keep it running for longer than you need to and if you demonstrate this for classes um, that while you might have students coming around having a good close look at their thing when it's not running before you started actually going I would encourage them to not cluster around but to move further back so the other thing you can do to make it a bit safer apart from standing further away because of course these electromagnetic waves obey the inverse square law and the further away you are the lower the intensity but the other thing you can do is adjust the voltage on the secondary and you do this by sliding it back and forth because only the bit that overlaps will be acting as a transformer and so the more uh, overlap you get the higher the voltage on the secondary but the more you pull it out and the less overlap there is the lower voltage you get on the secondary so what I'm going to do is set my spark gap to about a centimetre and it takes about depending on you know humidity and all sorts of air conditions you could as a rule of thumb you could say it takes about 10,000 volts to jump across about a centimetre of air because at that potential difference um, that's enough to um, ionise the air and so current can flow across and make the spark so I'm going to go, let it go now you can see there isn't enough voltage in the secondary for it to jump across but I'm going to move it across until I get a spark 
Oh, there we go. Just got a spark. And so I will leave it at this voltage and not turn it up higher because the higher the voltage, the greater the acceleration of the particles. And so the more um, the intensity and the higher the frequency of the radiation you get out. So I'm going to leave it like this. Now, Hertz had as his detector another spark gap. So this is what we would call the transmitter spark gap. What he had was another one, not with any power supply this time. The spark gap of his receiver coil was a simple gap joined by a loop just to complete the circuit so that current could flow. And he had his loop quite a long distance away from the transmitter and he found that whenever a spark jumped across this transmitter he would find a fainter smaller spark he'd have to hold his electrodes closer together but he would see a faint spark across the gap of his receiver loop and we don't have a receiver loop so these days we are able to receive the waves in an easier way with a little AM radio. So what I suggest if you're doing this as a demonstration have it on AM because the frequency is a bit lower than the AM band so FM really won't detect it at all. Um, if you've got AM you tune it to the lowest frequency not to any station but just as low down as it will go so that you've got just static and then when you get the spark jumping this radio that detects radio waves is just making that bit of static that bit of sound that you can hear I'll bring it a bit closer so you can see that Clearly radio waves are traveling from there to the aerial inside the radio and then getting detected and turned into sound. Um, the other thing I'll just mention about this is the fact that this uh, radio wave getting uh, produced is polarized. So because we've got this spark gap so that the electrons are traveling horizontally, that means the only type of radio wave given out will be one where the electric field is horizontal because the electric field is always parallel to the direction that the charges are moving. So all radio waves given out by this are polarized horizontally. And when we talk about light or any kind of electromagnetic wave being polarized, we mean the direction of the electric field. So we would say that the waves coming off this are horizontally polarized so electric field horizontal magnetic field vertical and in fact Hertz found that the only time he would get any spark jumping in his receiver coil was when it was parallel the electrodes had to be set up parallel to the electrodes of the transmitter because then the horizontal electric field was able to make charges jump horizontally in the receiver when he turned his receiver so if the electrodes were on top of each other um, there was no spark at all and so that's what one of the things that he found this polarization of the energy that was traveling from transmitter to receiver um, the fact that it was polarized was an indication that it was a wave.